Hi, I'm Daniel Cunningham, CEO of Leonardo 24-7, and today we're going to talk about asset management tools that are used by property managers. So asset management is really related to kind of the ownership activities and what owners are interested in uh, with respect to the operations of a property. So property managers tend to be very focused on a day-to-day -day basis on you know, leasing and marketing, occupancy, those sorts of things. Asset managers and asset management tools tend to be focused on financial performance. Um, you want to see metrics with respect to uh, leasing trends, NOI, expense ratios. Many asset management tools really are involved with sort of slicing and dicing financial data so that you can provide asset managers with insights into you know, the health of a property. You might have great NOI, but your capital expenses are high and your actual cash flow is low. Or you might, be, um, you might have great occupancy, but your economic occupancy is low because concessions are being offered. Asset managers or owners, they want insights into that kind of information. And that's not always on the, on the radar of property managers who are very in the day kind of focused. So the kinds of tools that, are, that you see are you know, BI platforms that can take the data that comes out of, a, out of a typical accounting platform and repurpose that data to provide the kinds of metrics that the asset managers want to make business decisions. In addition, asset managers, they want to understand at a glance, if possible, that the property managers, that the folks on site, have a command of everything else that's happening at the property. So yes, the financials are important, and yes, you know your leasing trends and occupancy is important, and rental rates are important, but looking at competitive markets, uh, looking at doing performing market surveys and presenting how the property is comparing against comparable properties in the market. But also what is of interest is resident demographics. You know, uh, where are, are the residents coming from that are, that are um, moving into the property? Are we, are we having some specific geographic area that we're drawing from? Are we getting residents that all work in a sort of a similar location that we can then target through marketing? Uh, you you want to, as a property manager, you want to be able to demonstrate to the owners and the asset managers that you really understand the demographic to which you're appealing. Other tools that have really come along that are helping in the asset management, property management relationship is a revenue management software. So at this point, revenue management ought to be table stakes for any institutional class operator. And if you're an owner with a property that's, call it 100 units or more, you absolutely should be using revenue management. And the great thing about revenue management is it allows the property managers and the owners to have a dialogue about what kind of revenue targets they can set. And then you, the revenue manager sort of takes care of trying to achieve those targets. And if you, if you miss those targets, then at least you, you have some objective data to then make decisions about um, how you're going to change rental targets and that sort of thing because you didn't achieve the occupancies you want to. So that's, that's really sort of, uh, if you have revenue management in place, you can sort of defuse this discussion, sometimes the tension that exists be be between owners and the operators as to you know, why aren't we 98% leased or why aren't we hitting certain rent uh, premiums. So revenue management is a, is a, is a really important tool. Um, a lot of the marketing tools, like for screening, and for you know, posting the, the available units, a lot of those have now grown to the point where they, they offer a lot of transparency so that owners and managers, asset managers and operators can have a real-time discussions about you know, what, what are our screening standards? Uh, do we want to have a two times uh, monthly rent? Uh, are we going to set limits on, uh, you know, where are we going to set our limits with respect to credit? And if those don't produce the results that you're looking for in terms of, of um, leasing, you, you at least have a benchmark that everybody agreed upon that now you can go and revisit. And on the marketing front, again, like you being able to see real time the ads that are going up, to see those that when they're posted and to track the results of, of those various posts is all really, really important. And it allows the owners and, and the operators to have a discussion about what's working and what isn't. All of this has really served to improve the relationship and the transparency between, you know, between owners and asset managers over the years. So it's, it's very possible for property management to go right and asset management to go wrong. And that happens when, you know, for example, property management, when maybe you're leasing and your occupancy is at 
whatever target that you've set and the property looks good and residents are happy, that's a successful property management engagement. But it doesn't mean that on the asset management side, you have issues. And the asset management side is going to look at, well, what was NOI budget? Maybe you're 98% occupied, but you're not hitting the rent targets that you had. Um, or maybe you're hitting the rent targets that you had, but you're, you're, not, you know, you're not fully occupied or you're not at the occupancy levels that you want. Um, asset management also goes wrong when things that don't necessarily affect property managers start to happen. Things that affect the owner's bottom line, not the property manager's performance, can be failures in asset management. So if you have a trip and fall incident and you get sued, like that's a failure of, of asset management um, because that is something that affects the owner. That's their issues to deal with. The lawsuits are uh, typically property managers are indemnified against those. So it gets kicked over onto the owner or the, uh, or the uh, asset manager side of the house. A lack of, of transparency into what's being done on a daily basis is a failure of asset management. If everything looks fine at the surface level, but down below preventive maintenance isn't really happening uh, and you're, you're at the risk of greater equipment loss uh, due to you know, catastrophic failures or reduced useful life cycle because the prop, proper preventive maintenance isn't being done. Like that's a failure uh, at the asset management level. Asset managers will, will care more about that. Escalating insurance rates because you've had um, incidents, you've had, you know, um, you have too many claims. That affects the asset managers and the owners and not so much the property managers. If you have effective asset management in place, not only will the property be meeting its benchmarks, its financial benchmarks, but the asset itself is being preserved which means the facility is being, is being run properly, the, the equipment is being maintained properly, the operating risk at the property is being managed so that you're not, you, don't have, you don't have lawsuits, you don't have claims, your incident reports are low, um, and you're staying in compliance with local codes so you're not getting fined. That's where true asset management starts to, to show its, uh, its true colors. If property managers are seeking to manage the assets more effectively from an, from, from an asset management perspective, there's a few things that you need to have in place. I mean, number one, you need uh, not just an accounting platform in place because that's the sort of, you know, that, it gives those are table stakes. Everyone needs to have, uh, you know, a, I would say a robust accounting platform, but you need to go beyond the income statement, cash flow statement, and balance sheet when you're producing reports for your, uh, for your owners or your, your asset manager. You have to be uh, able to provide insights into the financial metrics of the assets. If you want to provide great asset management, you need to understand what the NOI goals are, what your economic occupancy goals are. You need to be able to look into the future and project your least percentage based on current trends. You need to provide some assurance that you are maximizing rent by either using a revenue management system or by doing extensive market surveys and comparing yourself against comparable properties. There are a number of, of key financial benchmarks you need to be aware of that are outside of um, are we leased up and um, you know, do we, are we under budget on expenses. That's sort of the, the financial side. The other side is when it comes to, to asset operations, the asset life cycle. Um, you need to have a system in place that, first of all, make sure that preventative maintenance happens. You cannot rely on the local knowledge of your maintenance supervisor. Uh, you can't rely on a, a manual that, that outlines your best practices in terms of what uh, needs, to be, needs to be done with respect to maintenance. You can't rely on a manual to convey the frequency and the procedures that maintenance staff need to follow on a regular basis because none of that stuff gets paid any attention to. So you need a system that allows you to automatically present the, the preventive maintenance program to the right person at the right time. Something like Leonardo 24-7 where those schedules are generated automatically based on a property's unique amenity and equipment profile I think is, is becoming more and more uh, a must-have uh, by institutional owners. You need a way to make sure that the risk mitigation procedures and uh, overall kind of operating promise that you make to owners and to asset managers that you have a way of, of demonstrating that those are being fulfilled. There's a lot of work that property managers do on a daily, weekly, monthly basis that isn't reflected on the financials 
but is really, really important. You know, walking the property and looking for trip hazards or uh, going through and making sure that the, the model unit is pristine on a daily basis. Checking to make sure that the website is has the latest photos and has the correct phone number and that uh, units available units are being marketed in a timely fashion. Reporting, um, sending in your collections reports and making sure that those are being followed up on. There's a whole host of things that are outside of kind of what affects the top line that you need to be doing to be a good steward of that asset. And it's very difficult to demonstrate those things to owners if you don't have a system, if you don't have a tool that captures those things and then can report it to uh, on a monthly basis or even on demand to an owner or an asset manager. There's very few systems that, that do that effectively. Um, and that's why one of the reasons that we created Leonardo 24-7 was to assist um, in that really important process. And by the way, when you do that, you're going to create so much more trust. You're going to engender so much more trust between yourself, your company, and, and the owner that they're going to have for the first time real confidence that the asset is really being properly cared for. And um, that, that, that's a bonus to everybody. I think that the other thing that, that comes along with uh, proper asset management is risk mitigation. Um, you need to make sure you're aware of what municipal codes are. You need to make sure you're aware of basic risk mitigation practices to, you know, to mitigate trip hazards or, or to keep uh, branches trimmed away from the roofs as wintertime approaches so you don't have snow loads and that your balconies are being maintained and inspected on a regular basis. Um, there's a whole host of risk mitigation that, um, in theory, you could go your whole life and never do it, and you'll be fine. But the one time something bad happens, if you've not been doing risk mitigation, um, really bad things can happen. Insurance policies can get canceled because you've not been you've been negligent in in upholding the local laws or best practices with respect to maintenance. And it's one of those things that that um, is a silent killer of assets. And we had a client once who had a fire at a property and they hadn't done um, a basic fire inspection that needed to be done annually. And so when the underwriters came to the property and found out that hadn't been done, they um, denied the claim. They said, you haven't, you haven't upheld your responsibilities. And, um, and that company went into bankruptcy because the, the millions of dollars in losses and claims from the, from the residents that all hit the, the owner and the property management company you know, was off the hook because the management companies are typically indemnified in those kinds of scenarios. So um, proper risk, risk management is a, is a significant piece of asset management, but it's often overlooked and, and to your detriment. I'm Daniel Cunningham, CEO of Leonardo 24-7. Thanks for joining me as we discussed asset management tools used by property managers. And please check us out at www.leonardo247.com to request a demo.